Hey friends, welcome back to a new video. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my plant-based diet, answer some questions, give you guys some background because I do share a lot of plant-based recipes on this channel, but I've never really talked about why I'm plant-based, how it came to it, and yeah, just a little bit more information about what it's like to have a plant-based diet. So I wanted to give you a little bit of background first. So I first started adopting a vegan diet about four or five years ago. Back then, what triggered it was I watched the documentary, What the Health, and basically it talks about the health and environmental impact of meat and dairy consumption and I was very interested and intrigued to learn more. I am in general pretty interested in a healthy lifestyle. And so I started researching more after the film. The film had kind of sparked something in me. I went on to read about a lot of different studies, also a lot of the studies that they used in the film. They have this really great website where they list all their sources. So I went and dug deeper there. To be honest, I was hoping to in a sense prove the film wrong. With all the facts that I'd kind of found, I was forced to, in a sense, adopt a vegan diet if health was really that important to me. So I went vegan for health reasons and I wasn't very strict with it. I had convinced myself factually that having a vegan diet is the healthy choice, but emotionally I was still very much interested in dairy and meat since it is or was very tasty to me and my emotional side was still trying to get myself to have animal-based products so i would find myself kind of sneaking in a cheese pretzel which funnily funnily enough i never really had before going plant-based but i guess this rebellious side of me thought if i can't have this now i I, I need to have this if I need to go against the rules that I set for myself. And also just whenever I went on vacation, on trips, I did not follow my vegan diet. My reason being that I wanted to try out the local food and it is part of the local culture. And yeah, just something that I didn't want to miss out on. And I am also a pretty big foodie. Also being vegan just really limits your options when you're on the go. Mind you, this was Four years ago, being vegan wasn't as prevalent as it is nowadays. So throughout this whole process, I educated myself more on just what goes on behind the scenes when it comes to the production of meat and dairy. And I was forced to learn a lot of very unpretty things. I guess as a child, we're taught that cows are here to give us milk and farms are this place where everyone's happy and all the animals are happy that's their home and they live there and everything is such a happy place but in reality there are basically no such farms that doesn't really exist and cows don't give milk it's not their job to give milk they give milk because they're mothers and not because they're cows and it's just not never it, it just isn't something that i actually really thought about before the more i learned the more my empathetic side really felt with these animals and the more sadder i also got just not being able to wrap my head around what us humans are doing to animals but also to each other so looking more and more into the animal welfare side of things i was more and more also emotionally convinced to adopt a vegan diet and it went from craving animal-based products whenever i saw them when i saw chicken rumsticks or cheese pizza or an egg or a fried egg i was I had to kind of detach myself from the situation because I would crave those things. But now that I emotionally also convinced myself, I don't, it doesn't tempt me anymore. If I see some type of animal based product, especially meat, I will automatically think of the animal and how it's treated and what it had to, or what a lot of animals have to go through. And I am so much more passionately now behind 
the cause and passionately plant-based and passionately vegan and I was forced in a sense to look at what's happening and to decide do I want to continue to support the things that I find wrong or do I want to actively go against it. So for about a year now I am so much more convicted and fully behind being plant-based and vegan and it was definitely a slow and gradual process and now I I'm so much more, not in a sense strict, because it's not a rule that I impose, it's just not something that I want anymore. I also want to disclaim though that just because you have a plant-based diet or are eating a vegan, eat a vegan diet doesn't mean you're automatically healthy. You can have a vegan diet and be super unhealthy and eat fries and have sodas and being vegan does not equate to being healthy. You still have to very much be careful that you do have a balanced diet, meaning, meaning you do get enough seeds and nuts and legumes and whole grain carbs and healthy plant-based protein sources and cruciferous and dark green vegetables. You can definitely be unhealthy just eating the vegan processed foods. In my opinion, a lot of the vegan substitutes are also not very healthy. I'd also ask you guys to ask me any questions you have on being vegan or having a vegan diet and I have gotten some questions for you. So thank you to all of you who sent in your questions. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to go through and answer some of them. So number one is, hi, so I find that plant-based foods are harder to make time-consuming, need a lot of different ingredients, etc. And I'm not talking about like sandwich and avocado or something, I'm talking about a full meal. Maybe I'm wrong, but do you have any recipes that you find to be easy, tasty, and fulfilling? Thanks. So I would say that vegan meals can be very complicated and very complex and very time-consuming, but they can also be very simple and quick and easy. So it really depends on what direction you want to go down. Um, what I find to be most time consuming are dishes where you have a lot of different aspects to them. So things like bowls I think are so so delicious but you have most of the time a lot of different components to them so you have to make the tempeh and cut up the vegetables and steam the broccoli and the more components and ingredients you have to a dish I find that the faster that kind of gets out of control and gets to be more time consuming and complicated. So go to easy recipes I make that are quick and you can have for multiple days or for one curries. I love curries for that and I find that on the second day the curries are so much more flavorful. The curry recipes that I use are from Minimalist Baker. I will leave them down below. Some of my favorites are the Masaman curry. Um, what else is there? I, I remember there's a pumpkin curry that I really love. She has a lot of amazing recipes, sweet or savory, they're all amazing from her. Another website that I love to go to for recipes is Avant Garde Vegan and he does really delicious recipes as well. He has a lentil eggplant dish that I love. I will leave that down below as well. He also has this creamy vegan chicken pasta dish that is so delicious that is also really easy to make and also just one pot recipes whether it's stews or even one pot pasta dishes anything one pot is also going to be really fast and i mean you can go, go all the way really simple down to just having a pasta with a delicious spicy tomato sauce with some olives and some peas, basil, and that's it. It's just a very simple tomato sauce pasta that I will make sometimes if I don't have time or don't feel like cooking. So as I said, it can, it can go both ways. It doesn't need to be really complicated and doesn't need to be really, uh, it can be really simple. Another question is, have you always been plant-based? If not, was it a hard transition to make in terms of lifestyle? So I've kind of answered this on the background when I talked about the background, but the transition was definitely hard because I went kind of cold turkey with it. And as I said, I had those 
that had that rebellious thing in me that wanted to go against those rules and because I wasn't emotionally invested in going plant-based. Um, so I would say as a tip to be kind to yourself. If, if you have one of these, one of those days where you do end up eating something that is not plant-based and it wasn't planned and you end up kind of maybe beating yourself up about it, just try to be kind with yourself and know that it's not like a overnight thing, but it is definitely more of a process. It was a long process for me to go from being not vegan to now being so emotionally convinced of it. Just remember it's a process and it doesn't need to happen overnight. And I would definitely encourage you to learn more about why you want to be vegan, to really have that, to have your why. Why do you want to be doing this? And the stronger that is, the easier it will be to change your lifestyle according to your beliefs and your values. Then the next question, hi, my questions are regarding vitamin supplements for a plant-based diet. Firstly, what vitamin supplements do you think are essential for such a diet? And secondly, what vitamins, both essential and just beneficial, do you take as a supplement? So I think vitamins are really, really important when talking about being vegan. I feel like it isn't talked about enough. So something that is the utmost important thing is to take vitamin B12. It is a form of vitamin B that is only found in animal-based products and it's important for your stomach health. A quick side note from editing me on B12. So B12 is not actually produced by animals. The B12 that we get from animals, they actually get from the environment. So B12 is actually produced by specific bacteria. But since the animals that we consume, they live in unnatural constructed environments, they also don't get enough B12. So the animals actually get B12 supplements so that they don't have health issues because of that. So the B12 that we get from animals is actually from B12 supplements. The majority of the B12 supplements produced actually goes to animal farming, which I find interesting. So yeah, why not go directly to the source and just take these supplements yourself? Definitely take vitamin B12, most important. Then a lot of, I know that a lot of people take um, iron supplements. I personally do not take iron supplements because I try to take as little supplements as possible and try to get the nutrition and the vitamins that I need from foods that are readily available. As I said, you can be plant-based but very unhealthy. So try to have a balanced plant-based diet. And with iron, there's just a lot of possibilities for where you can get irons in plant-based foods and vegetables. Not all iron is built the same in a sense. There is plant-based iron and animal based iron and the iron supplements are mostly like the form that you would find in animal products which is not a very healthy form of iron so when you take those supplements it's kind of like you're getting iron from animal based products which is not great since they're more out of control in your body and not in a good way as I said, do your own research. I, I don't remember this exactly, but yeah, since iron is something you can easily get from vegetables and just plant-based sources, I li like to just get it from there, but you can always do like a blood test to see how your iron levels are and whether you need to amp up foods with higher iron, higher, higher amounts of iron or take supplements. And the next, vitamin I think is important to talk about is omega-3. Omega-3 is in general a pretty important source of vitamin that regardless of being plant-based or not people often lack and there are a lot of plant-based options for omega-3 especially in walnuts, flax seeds, things like that. Um, and, but again, there are different forms of omega-3. So the omega-3 that you get in, for example, walnuts and flax seeds is the omega-3, it's called ALA, and your body can use this ALA to produce the other forms of omega-3, which is EPA and DHA. But some bodies are just not as efficient in producing EPA and DHA, which are both pretty important. So you can take a supplement for that. Um, usually that comes in the form of fish oil, but since we're plant-based, I take it in the form of algae oil. 
um, since the fish get it from algae and yeah, you can just go straight to the source. I also take vitamin D, which is um, what you get from sunlight. But again, this is not plant-based related, but just in general, it is good to take that because especially in Europe, you don't most often don't get enough sun, especially when you wear sunscreen, you don't get that vitamin D that is necessary. My philosophy is just to take as less supplements and package and process things as possible and to get it naturally. But again, I would also encourage you to do like a blood test um, where they can check your levels for vitamins. Then next question, is it hard to maintain your weight on a balanced plant-based diet? I am asking because I always see a lot of people using it to use weight only. So I definitely get this that people use a plant-based diet to lose weight since it's, I think it's easier to lose weight with a plant-based diet, but um, I haven't had any problem. I found that I can eat much more on a plant-based diet to maintain my weight um, in the sense that I just, I eat like my body tells me that it needs to eat. So if I'm hungry, I'll eat something. And yeah, I find that I can eat until I'm satisfied, until I feel like, wow, my belly is so full and it's a positively satisfied feeling and I can eat a lot of food. Whereas when I didn't have a plant-based diet, I would have to, in a sense, or I used to regulate myself more in the sense of, okay, that was a little too much. You need to be careful, maybe slow down here. Um, especially with things like cheeses, they tend to be very hearty. And I, I have po a positive experience with that since I get to eat a lot more, which I like. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't had a problem. I, I hope that answers your question. The last question is, hi, I'm... Irsa, Irsa, I'm sorry, I don't know how to, I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, here, are some few, here are a few questions. What is your favorite flower to work with in the kitchen? What, okay, so let's do that first one first. Um, the topic flower is a little sad since in Germany we have a flower shortage right now with um, everything that's going on in the Ukraine and people just panic buying flowers. So flour is nowhere to be found right now, which makes me really sad because I love to bake. But I try to go whole grain as much as possible. But of course, for some things, going whole grain makes it a little too dense, a little too hard. If you want something fluffy, I will go like 50-50 whole grain and plain white flour. Um, I don't have a preference. I guess I use whole grain wheat the most. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of rye. Um, I heard that rye is good for bread and spelt flour is good for cakes, things like that. But I don't really have a preference, I have to say. I just go with whatever I feel like and try to mix it up. And yeah, whole grain, that's the thing I try to do to try to incorporate more of. Second question was, what are some disadvantages you have faced while practicing this diet? Um, disadvantages, I would say, is that it is less convenient. Sometimes if I'm out and about and I see a restaurant selling hot waffles with um, like hot cherry, like this cherry sauce, I would be like, oh, I'd love to have a waffle right now. And it's not like you can't have a plant-based waffle, you can, but most restaurants and stores don't sell plant-based waffles. So I'd be like, oh, I have to make it at home. I just, I wish I could have it now. So being out and about is more inconvenient, but it's getting better I think month by month. There's so many more plant-based restaurants and options, which is really good. But I've also learned to just be prepared to prepare myself. It saves money and is also most often healthier. Um, and I guess other people, maybe family members, not understanding is also, I guess, an inconvenience. Yeah, what else? No, I haven't found any other disadvantage. Um, yeah. And then the last question, what are five plant-based recipes you would really recommend to us to make ourselves? Thank you, love your content. 
Um, okay. Oh, so difficult. So many great recipes. So again, Minimalist Baker, love pretty much all her recipes. I love her, I'm thinking of sweet things now. I love her cinnamon rolls. I love her cakes. I couldn't say which ones. You just have to make her recipes. That's what I would recommend. But you can make so many amazing things that are vegan. I think a lot of times the misconception is if it's vegan, it'll taste like cardboard. Like if I will say to friends or family, like, oh, I made this thing, it's vegan. they would be like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want that. It'll probably, will taste bland. And then if they do try, they'll really love it. Or my dad was also once convinced that there had to be cream in this vegan uh, in this creamy pasta dish but actually i had used coconut milk and it was so nice and creamy that he thought this this is too delicious to be plant-based so i think that's a big misconception you just have to find the right recipes um and also the things just taste just as indulging but you don't feel gross afterwards i used to feel gross pretty quickly after I had something that was non-vegan and just very fatty with a lot of butter and a lot of sugar. I just felt gross inside. And with vegan variations that are made a little more healthier, for example, I once made the sweet potato brownie by Minimalist Baker. It was so delicious, so chocolatey, so fudgy. Um, and I didn't feel as bad afterwards because I knew what went into it and I knew that there weren't unhealth that many unhealthy things or any unhealthy things in there you can still make the things that you crave don't be scared of that there are so many recipes nowadays the internet is such a wonderful tool and people are sharing their ideas and the recipes everywhere so if you decide to go vegan now is like the best time because there is just so much research and innovation in Plant, this plant, in the plant-based world, it's so much easier nowadays than it used to be back then. And I also want to give you some further information if this kind of intrigued you, if you want to learn more. Someone that I highly recommend is Earthling Ed. He does really, really amazing and interesting videos. I think it's called Debate a Vegan, where he would set up like a table somewhere, often at a college campus, and invite people to discuss and talk with him about being vegan. And it's in a very non-hostile way, but in a very factual way, where both are being respectful to each other, and it's all about facts and not about hating each other <laughs> and he brings a lot of good arguments and insights and information that i think a lot of people don't know or don't really think about so thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this video hope this was helpful and interesting and informative if you have any further questions or follow-up questions just leave them down below i'll be sure to chat with you guys thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you in my next video bye